Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards. Nerds and neckbeards. Welcome to another edition of Westeros Wheneverly. 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 What's up, Dave? What's up, Tannis? What's uh, what's happening? What's happening, my friend? You know, um, not a lot, yeah. except for the fact that season <laughs> seven is here. Oh, the show is back. The show yeah. is back, Dave. And you fucking love it. So I was absurdly excited about it. I Who know. am I anymore? You, it's you, know, you said it earlier yep. when we were getting our drinks ready. Yep. You absolutely it's, did. It's all, it's all yep. about the new material. Oh, I think you that's why get, I'm so you excited. You just can't get enough of it. Well, because I, so it, it, the break has happened, right? Like the separation for me between the show and the, and, and yeah. the book series. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. totally devoid of each other. Yep. And I am so hungry for new material. Yeah. I, and I've come to love the show. I was absurdly excited about the season premiere of season seven. And... You know what? <laughs> I think yeah. that, uh, and this is my conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. is that Go George R.R. R. Martin yeah. is not going to release The Winds of Winter until okay. after the show is completely oh, ended. Oh, really? I think, because he, I mean, he stated in an interview that like, you know, they're two separate things, they're two separate paths, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. the show is the show, the book is the book. Yeah, yeah, um, he has said that. And I think in order to keep them... You know, gotta keep them separated. Gotta keep them separated. Yeah, bow, I think bow. he's gonna. He's like, I, I have a feeling that the Winds of Winter is actually already completed. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. And he's just like, I think if it was done, yeah. he would he would have it out. I don't, it I don't maybe know. it's done. I think best case scenario, it's done. But he is um, maybe maybe people are proofreading it. Maybe he's got like a final edit out mm -hmm. there. Uh, but I think that's being very generous. I don't think he's done with it yet. So, Tana. So, David. What are we drinking here? Oh, well. Because. Well, buddy. What for, are we hold drinking? On. <laughs> First off. <laughs> Lay it on me. The episode was called yep. Dragonstone. It was, yeah. But I think mm -hmm. a more appropriate name for it would yep. have been Poop and Soup. <laughs> oh, I was just about to take a slurpy bite <laughs> <laughs> of this nutty, uh, wet concoction we have here. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> Tana and I were texting back and forth about what we should make for this episode and um, mm, the idea country. of the poop and soup drink <laughs> somehow Sam's, decided we're calling tonight to drink sam's poop and soup because if you've seen the episode you understand why yeah actually i have a very important clip from the episode can i play it for you yeah go ahead mm. well i eat this i think it sets the stage nicely um for the drink that we're having tonight and uh there there was there's two ways to make this drink yeah. Okay, there's two versions. We're doing right. Dave's version, but I have a version I'm going to explain to you guys. Is Dave's version better than Tana's version? I think the people can decide. Let me um, let me get our clip here ready. All right. Okay, I think this encapsulates the whole oh, episode really. What did I just eat? Oh, that's the game we're playing. What was that? <laughs> right? Because you know, was it poop or was it soup? soup? Was it soup or was it poop? <laughs> oh, and then God. there's Sam doing the whole thing. What did I just eat? <laughs> That was disgusting. It's gonna be real. There's some stuff in here that's gonna be real gross. Here we go, guys. This is the clip. <laughs> oh, poor Sam. Oh, it's so oh. gross. I have to say about this Sam scene where he's scrubbing out the bedpans and yeah. then also is like eating bowls of brown. One. That's totally a bowl of brown. Like, that's what I envisioned. Yeah. Just, like, this filthy, gross, you know, brown and green soup that yep. also makes you wretch. And then he's scrubbing out the chamber pots. And then he's, like, vomiting and putting books on shelves and bombing. His little, like, burps. Oh, my God. So great. <laughs> oh, there was. There was. Oh, God. So this is our, our drink. I want you guys to imagine. Our drink tonight is, is brown. In both versions, it's brown. Oh, Dave's version and eating? mine. Why am I drinking this? <laughs> mm. Oh, there's a crunchy. I really thought my there's version was going to be good. Mm -hmm. Because, so, oh. Yeah. We haven't told them what it is yet. Oh, we haven't. So we're calling it Sam's Poop and Soup. Yeah. And you can make it two ways. It's up to you. Just like this is a Song of Ice and Fire, we have Sam's Poop and Soup Fire version and Sam's Poop and Soup Ice version. 
Dave has handled the ice version, but because I think that that's the better of the two, allow me to describe what we're not drinking. Okay. Okay? In my version... <laughs> While I'm very happy that we're not <laughs> drinking this, I guess. In my version, you take uh, start with a can of beef and barley soup, okay? And heat it up until it's red hot, yep. all right? So you have boiling soup that is beef and barley. Now, you don't want to get chunky soup. You don't want, like, big bites. You want it to be, like, a drinkable soup. And into that soup, you're going to add, to your taste, corn, mushy peas, and an entire Guinness stout or a beer stout of some kind. And in that hot, chunky, thick beverage right, that you would have to, like, drink and slurp and That's called, swallow. I think what you're describing is an Irish yeah. dinner. So, exactly. So, this was my idea for the drink. I told Kirsten about it, and she uh, was retching and completely shut everything down and said, no, you can't do that. You can't do that to yeah, Dave. Yeah, you can. It sounds Don't disgusting. do this to Dave. And I was like, but you have to understand the sounds it'll make <laughs> while we're, like, slurp drinking, and then we'll get chunks of something. And I thought we could uh, put, like, secret things in there, like, that would be gross. Like, like a craisins. gummy worm? Or gummy worm. Yes. Something that's like surprising and the texture doesn't go would have been perfect. But that was the fire version. Okay. The ice version is was, what we have tonight. So the ice version was supposed to be a root beer float mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with some vanilla vodka, vanilla mm. ice cream, and root beer. Chunky. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tana, of course, being Tana, <laughs> uh, instead did not bring over the root beer nope. that she was on the hook to bring, <laughs> and instead brought Dr. Pepper, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is not a bad substitute. A little on the sweet it's side. A little on the sweet side. But, and, and also, she decided to bring <laughs> a whole bunch of nuts, because... What would poop be without a little nuttiness exactly. to it? Exactly. Poop or soup. Poop or soup. You could have a stew that has nuts in it, I suppose. That's right. I... Mm-hmm. And in addition, she brought some candy. assorted random candies. Oh. So it's, and, and ice cream. And of course... Well, yeah, mm -hmm. I said the vanilla ice cream okay. already. Vanilla ice cream. You also crushed up a Chips Ahoy or <laughs> oh, yeah. homemade baked chocolate An chip cookie. An entire Pepperidge Farm... Uh, pecan and chocolate chunk cookie, the dry cookies, you know, the big ones in the little yeah. pepperidge farm. I smashed up an entire cookie, chunks and all, into our ice cream float. And so there'll be chunks of, you know, big chocolate, chunks of cookie, chunks of, you know, the candy that I mashed up, the nuts. And uh, it's nice and brown, I gotta yeah. say. it's. Um, uh, it, I thought it was going to be dessert. I thought, you know, a soup is appetizer first. Yeah. And then a the dessert... Food is you know the last so, so it's ice well, and fire I mean, it's tip, typically yeah. you you eat the soup right right mm -hmm. and then you poop <laughs> poop I the mean, soup you poop out the soup so i'm just saying guys we're very on point we're very we're selection. very on point yes oh uh in addition to the banana to the vanilla rum there's a little bit of 99 bananas in here can i you can. Uh, interject you can. our dire cat Susie is on the table in front of me and sniffing her whole face into yeah, she, the poop um, and soup. She has some weird obsession no. with ice cream. She really likes it. She will climb all over anything and everything to get a little bit of your ice cream. And I think she thinks that we're eating ice cream mm -hmm. instead of just drinking this disgustingness. Fun fact, so. you may not know what I'm just discovering right now. Yeah. Pecans float. <laughs> <laughs> you got a floater in yours? I got a floater. <laughs> Oh, Sam, that, let's start with that montage, right? Since that's what we're... Um, wait. That's our theme of wait, the of the drink here? That's what you want to start with? Yeah, just... You don't want to start with the whole D&D, <laughs> like, tricking everyone into thinking that there's a flashback going on? <laughs> I mean... Were you tricked? Well, okay. Were you tricked? I'm going to be honest. Be honest. So... Did you know that was Arya? I'll tell you when I knew it was Arya. Mm -hmm. As soon as he said the line about... Oh, the great Walter Frey giving you two feasts. I was like, that is not Walter <laughs> Frey. I, and I went like All this. Right. I looked at Lauren and I, yep. I made the motion of oh, nice. pulling the, the well, face off. Um, did you have people over? So I, I was in I, I was in New Orleans for the episode and yes. it required some, like, I was traveling for a friend's birthday. We had a yeah. bunch of people. Somebody actually brought Amazon Fire or something like they went out of their way to make sure that, Game of that we would available. be able to watch Game of Thrones on the big screen TV at the house we were airbnb -ing. I was looking forward to it all week, dude. I was so excited. So we had this big group of sort of strangers that were all in town for a birthday party. 
What did you do? So, I was invited to a watch party. Okay. And I am kind of a snob. Oh. When it comes to watching. Because, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, well... You have a very nice setup. The I, fans, I have a nice setup, right? Long-term fans will know the studio is mint. Like, you are yeah. you are I, a gadget guy. I'm a gadget guy. I like my surround yeah. sound. I like my HD. It's it's all got to kind of fall into place. Um, it's all set up very specifically. Like, yeah. you're an engineer. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I have my yeah. chair. I have my yeah. spot. Kind of like Sheldon Cooper a little yeah. bit. You know, yeah. like, I want to You know where all the, set, the best sound is exactly, going to be. Exactly, exactly. And so... You know, I got invited to this watch party, and and it was for a friend's, the uh, friend's the uh, one of my friends, one of the girls that he was dating at the time. You know, they were exclusive at the time, but this is not... last Sunday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not. Uh, okay. this, that's not the important part. Not the okay? point. Okay. Yep. The important mm-hmm. part was that I was invited. Okay. They were gonna do a co- They were doing like <laughs> cosplay, and they were doing food. Oh, nice. And it was. It was. It sounded like a great time. Yeah. However, I knew mm-hmm. that. I probably wasn't going to enjoy watching the show uh, because I a, probably wouldn't have had anywhere comfortable to sit because they have like a two bedroom apartment. Mm-hmm. It's not like a house uh-huh. with a bunch of room. Okay. And they didn't have surround sound. Dude, I am. And I, with like 25 people. I'm into this decision making process. So, so with like 25 people, a two bedroom apartment, they probably had a tiny couch hard and maybe, pass. A, maybe a couple chairs, <laughs> no surround sound. It would have been hard to hear. Well, I was like, you know what? You know, people would be talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. They, she, I asked her, I said, are people going to actually watch or are people going to be quiet? She's right. like, no, you know, we have a no talking rule during the show. And I was like, that's good. I was like, do you have surround sound? How big is your TV? <laughs> All these I'm going to need to know dimensions. I'm going I'm to need to know things. <laughs> And, I drink uh, and I know I watch Game of Thrones and I know things. And I know things. And um so Oh, this is so good. In the end, I decided not to go. Okay. So I have an, another group of friends who all very much know mm-hmm. that I am a Game of Thrones nerd. Right. Um, they know I have a podcast, etc. And, and they s- listen to us every week, I'm sure. Yeah, no. As if we put one out <laughs> every week. <laughs> I wish my friends were loyal. <laughs> To be fair, I don't think my parents even listen. <laughs> my parents uh, definitely don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's funny too because my dad is is I got my dad into Game of Thrones, but nice. I don't think he yeah. you know he's not a nerd. Dumb. He doesn't care about all this stuff. He probably doesn't even remember people's names. But anyway, so so I get a couple messages from people, um, and it's like, hey, are you doing anything for Game of Thrones? Mm. Like we're not doing anything. So I thought to myself. All right, if I can do it in my house and I can control the yep. you know the seating arrangements and the people and the and the numbers and I know I have surround sound, I know I have good sound quality yep. in my in my living room. Okay. You know how much poison wine to exactly, serve. Exactly, right, right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um I said, "All right." And I I invited like, I don't know, 3 4 like four other couples. Okay. Right? And I said, "All right, if you guys want to come, I'm going to have I'll go out I'll out, go out and buy hors d'oeuvres and kind of stuff." And nice. So I, I bought food and Lauren made these cute little signs for like, you know, we had the imp shrimp. Um, we imp had shrimp. I we love had it. Themed Drogon's, snacks. Yeah, we had Drogon's fire dip, which was like an inferno it. ghost pepper dip. Jeez. Um, we had, we had uh, Reek's uh, not so meaty sticks, which were <laughs> mozzarella sticks. <laughs> Did you see the meme where it was like... Uh, Aria got her eyes back. Yeah, I posted that on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Aria <laughs> got her eyes back. Jon Snow got his life back. Rion, the Reek. The Reek, or Theon, there's still yeah, hope. Theon. Hang in there, buddy. <laughs> Hang in there, buddy. Yeah, that's what it said. Right. Oh, that's perfect. Anyway, so I invited a bunch of people over, and um, the day of Sunday, yeah. I get everyone to cancel on me. What? Except Lauren's parents. And oh, so no. I had so much oh, food. Oh no. Dave. I, it went I went like full Jewish mother. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna have oh. six people, so oh, I should buy I enough food for everything. 20, you know. <laughs> I gotta have the shrimp cocktail. And if there's not, a, not everyone loves shrimp, so you gotta buy two. Oh my god. And you know, guacamole I made guacamole for like 20 people. I used like eight avocados. Oh, it was crazy. Uh, and so I had so much That's food. Amazing. Uh, and plus, you know, Lauren's parents brought stuff, right. and it was just oh my god, just like a, so much food. So it, it worked out well. Um, we ended up watching, you know, the two episodes that they mm-hmm. aired beforehand, and nice. then we watched the new episode. Nice. Um, but yeah, 
we were coming back from a bar, so we started late. And I was like, nobody go on Twitter. Nobody tell me anything. <laughs> no internet. No internet. <laughs> this is a blackout. Yeah. I actually, I have a, I have a, a, my friend, you know, Steve. Steve yep. was flying yep. back from Tennessee. He got stuck in the airport yep. on Monday. So he didn't, he couldn't watch it on Sunday. And he was like, oh man, it was so hard. I, I just didn't go on Facebook. I just didn't yep. go on the internet. That's got to be tough, couldn't, man. Couldn't do anything. Yeah. I don't know how people do the no spoiler, don't watch the show thing. Yeah. I, I, now that the books are, we have caught up, there's, I, I'm excited about the show. It is. A, I don't even recognize myself anymore. So let's let's dive right in. Sure. Right. So, Aria. So when did you know? So you, the, so you knew when she was like, oh, my second feast because Walter Frey is is a, a penny stingy, pinching. Yeah. He's a stingy old croc, cranky yeah. old man. There's yeah. no fucking way that he would have a second feast right. for, for anyone. Let alone his family. Mm -hmm. He makes some comment like... Who he hates. I he hates his kids. He's like, I gathered all my family yeah. together. Like, he's like, this is not Walter Frey. Something weird is going on. And the other thing that got me, like, kind of weird... Yep. ...was all the episodes start... They do the HBO static thing. Yep. And then they go right into... Dun, dun, Bum, dun, 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 like, dun, it goes dun, dun, right, right into the theme song. And this one didn't do that. And so I'm, I'm like, really, like... yeah. Something Something's different. Is odd. Something is new. weird going on here, and yep. we've seen like flashy back uh, <laughs> uh, um, brand sequences before. The old flashy back, right? Brand sequences before, <laughs> mm -hmm. but they didn't they didn't do anything like that, and it was with Walter Frey and his family. So right. something weird is going on. So that's when I knew. I as knew. soon as it opened on Walter Frey, I remembered that Arya killed him, uh -huh. and I was like, oh, this is. You knew right away? Oh, yeah. Right away. And instantly. Right away. Instantly. I was like, that's Arya in disguise. And so then he was like, second feast. Everyone yeah. drink up. And for everybody that was behind the Red Wedding, you know, my second thought was. So first thought, that's Arya. Yeah. Second thought, how on earth? Like, this was when I was like, Tana, remember to suspend your disbelief. How did Arya smuggle in a metric ton of poison? Enough poison to poison a hundred... 150 frays, a lethal dose. Where the fuck? How? Where? Where you bring that? How you bring that in? Maybe she made it. Yeah. Or like, where did you get this? So I was like, yeah. Tana, you can't think about it like that. You yeah. can't break down the logistics. People can just magically appear places. Yeah. She can have a metric ton. There yeah. was a quote from the New York Times that said, uh, "Between quote something like this, between Arya's gallons of poisoned wine and her labor-intensive sun-filled murder pie, she's getting <laughs> to be quite a chef." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I thought that was just a spot on. That's a, that's a good quote. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I don't think I was watching in the seasons where she made the murder pie, but I assume. What well, was last season? What? Who did she cut up into a pie? Right, right before she kills Walter Frey. Yeah. He's sitting in his chair. Oh, and that's he's going, right. He's going. Where are mm, my sons? That's get, right. get Black Walder and, yep. and Fat Walder, whatever the fuck he says. Yep. And yep. she goes, they're here, my lord. And he goes, mm -hmm. where? Where? And she goes, right here. Mm -hmm. And points at the pie. Yep. And he and she was dressed as like, yep. She was dressed as a serving girl or something. He, she was the that's serving right. girl that Jamie and Braun mm -hmm. kept talking about. And Braun was like, that's oh, right. you... You don't even have to fucking do anything, and they're all fucking are all looking at you. That's right. That's right. There was that was one of the best scenes. Yeah, because yeah. she was gonna kill his ass. Right. And that was a good scene from last season. It was yeah. Um, I had it confused when I read this quote because I was like, the fray pies, the, the huge, yeah, the three yeah. huge wedding feast pies that the mm -hmm. manderly serve. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, man, I thought that was an A plus scene. I thought that that opening scene was for me the best scene of the show. And I think that there were some really solid scenes. Yeah. I think that was a really great way to start. I think I think that was, yeah, I think D&D &D did a great yep. job of starting the mm -hmm. season. Like, not only does it set the tone for this episode, yep. it sets the tone for the entire season. Revenge like, sauce. It's just, yeah, it's just, I mean, ever since book two or book three, I forget exactly which one it was. I think it was two. Yep. Um, maybe it was three. Anyway, you'll who can you'll, Who can keep anything? Who can keep anything in linear form <laughs> these days but ever since that book i've been just like Arya's coming back as a super badass sneaky assassin yeah and it's i can't fucking wait yeah and now we fucking have it in the and show. nymeria is still alive in the show right yes okay so we're gonna see and we saw a we, in the in the uh coming up in next episode oh nice i don't see, think i saw that we see a flash yeah. of a wolf and then we then it cuts to Arya. 
Nice. Like kind of making a, oh my God face. So hopefully they're so, seeing each other, but maybe it's some trickiness. Yeah, we don't know if they're actually there, but yeah, hopefully. They get tricksy. Hopefully. What's, where do you want to go next? What's the next scene? But let's let's just move right along. If, okay. if I recall correctly, the do next it. scene is smog. Well, then we get the opener. We get, I thought you were going to say smog. I was like, mm, wrong franchise. Da, 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 right? Yep. And then we see smog, not the dragon. <laughs> um, we see smog like fog, and it's just the army of the dead walking by mm. and you see a um, white a white giant who one. is not one one it is one one it is not one one it's one way one dot one okay it's it not, has to be he has his not, eye out yeah but he has the wrong eye out okay oh reek shot one one's right eye okay yeah that was the one that was and bright that blue. was the one that was blight bright blue it's huh. not one one okay there were a couple giants if i remember there were a couple it, it was a pretty fierce looking yeah. army of the undead there yeah. it's definitely not one one because remember one one is also south of the wall yeah how would he have gotten north of the wall oh, see this is the, i just assume teleportation next, i don't yeah, know no see yeah no. and he was in winterfell actually right? yeah isn't yeah. that where the battle he, he dies right. within the walls of winterfell exactly right yeah, all right he kills him in winterfell so okay not so one, hey one, one. I'm, I'm glad that you that you picked up on that because yeah. i did not i yeah. was like oh one one well, he's a bad that's guy why now. they called me that's why in this <laughs> podcast i'm the show guy oh yeah that's true yeah, you that's are right. yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah yeah also it's the guy who gets stumped a lot anyway <laughs> so so that scene was kind of cool yeah um uh, nothing really like no real important data we get from that, except that the whites have giants. Yep. Right? Which... And they needed to remind us that they exist. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. But, like, they're, what's on the line here? Yeah. They're for coming. people. Yep. Uh, nothing really major out of that, though, but... Though, so that happens. Yep. And then... Where does it White jump Walker? to oh, uh, after let's see. that? Uh, friendly giant. I saw... Yep. So we talked about giants. Uh, I'm glad you it have goes, notes. It goes to Sam after that, I think. Is that is that it when may we see not, the poopins? Yeah, I think this is when we yeah the montage. Okay. And so this is my runner up for Everybody best scene. Everybody needs a montage. montage. Do you want me to play the poop? You want me to play the poop clip again? Splat. Yeah, let's splat, just, just play it in the background. Let's, can we put on a continuous loop so that it's somebody had made already on like YouTube? There's like, like 10 a ten hour, hour loop. Ten hours of poop and soup. Oh, so gross. <laughs> I thought that this scene was perfect. This is what the well show. Done. This is what the show does so well. Yeah. Uh, because you can't. You you, you can't get, get this in the book. You can't get this in the book. So the life of an acolyte. I was very much looking forward to seeing what it's like for Sam, and it's shitty. Ha. <laughs> I'm not, waka I'm waka. Not impressed. Not impressed. <laughs> uh, he. So we do this. Um, this this is the kind of thing that only the show can do. Like yeah. you're not gonna if you're George, you're not gonna be able to do this. He'll yeah. do it in another creative way, probably. But it's really effective to show a couple of things. Time is passing, mm -hmm. life is horrible, mm -hmm. uh, and mundane and gross and really hard. Yeah. And um and I think that that's a really I thought that was a very interesting way to give us all that information at once. Um, also, Sam has a key to the restricted area. Okay, sure, maybe. He stole it. Oh, no, he's down in the, in the, like, he's down the hallway from the restricted area. Yeah. And then he steals the key. Yep. Words, I don't remember. Was Gilly and the baby in the restricted area with him? No, 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 no. It was just him so alone, right? He, so, he's pooping and souping. Yeah, pooping and souping. And he talks to the art mage, art arch major while they're... Mm -hmm. Cutting out, which, by the way, was Horace Slughorn. So, uh, Slughorn. So I noticed that it was Slughorn, but you noticed more than that, Dave. So um, I'm pretty oh. sure Slughorn is the mm -hmm. one in the Harry Potter films he is. who says, no you, can't go to the, no, you can't go to the restricted area in the library. Yep. So he's doing it again. Hilarious. Um, so good reference to Harry Potter. Oh, my &D. God. That's hilarious. Um, I didn't even pick up on that, Dave. That's why I'm the show guy. You really are the show guy. Yep. Um, okay. So he let's talks Let's talk about... Him. There's two, two parts when Sam comes in. In the beginning and in the end. So in the beginning, it sets up his shitty life. Yep. And it's horrible. And they stack books on him and he put books away and he yep, cleans yep. up chamber he's, pots. Yep. And then towards the end, he's doing all that, but he has stolen the key. Yep. He's going to the cellar. Yep. Or he's going to the restricted area. Yep. To break, get... He breaks in, mm -hmm. or he uses the key to go in, and, and yeah, he steals a couple books. And it's during that scene that we see Jorah Mormont's dragon scale arm. Grayscale arm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's either and the he, one at the beginning or the end, but let's talk about them both right okay. now. Okay. So yeah, so he's walking by, he's getting the sickness, and then mm -hmm. we see Jorah Mormont's grayscale arm come out. Yeah. And he reaches out, and he says to Sam... Um, has she arrived has yet? Has she arrived yet? 
and and he go uh, and Sam goes who and sh- and he goes the Dragon Queen. Yes, and I thought that was awesome. Yeah. And so, Jor- why is Jorah in a fucking cell in Old Town? Because he's trying to get himself cured. God. Oh, I didn't even think of that. That was not at all on my radar, even a little bit. The Citadel is there to study sickness and heal. Yeah. And a man with a deadly disease <laughs> strolls up and says, cure me. Maybe. So I can go love my woman. So my question for that was, um, so Jorah's storyline is what I'm very interested in in the show. Yeah. Because it is so devoid of what's happening in the book series. In the book series, Jorah, now an ex-slave and a second son is about to battle outside the walls of Marine yeah. um, alongside Tyrion, who also is a former slave and is a member of the Second Sons. Right. Uh, and Jorah does not have dragon hit, dragon scale. That's not what it's called. Grayscale. Gray he scale. doesn't have grayscale. That we know of. No, he doesn't. That the we guy, know of. The two characters that they put together, he has never had an experience that would give him grayscale in the books. Oh, that's right. The character that's that he's right, been right. mashed up with is John Connington. That's right who they're not doing in the show, right. who is the, like, caretaker of fake Aegon. Right. And who he... Who could potentially be a he, Targaryen. Yep. And yeah. he has... John Connington has grayscale, and it's creeping up his arm. Death is creeping up his arm, and it's probably going to make him be more brazen as a commander and yeah. take chances he wouldn't have otherwise taken because the clock is ticking. He's going right. to die soon. And yeah. so if they're smashing these two characters together to make show Jorah... What I'm very interested to see where his storyline goes. I don't know where his storyline goes. And it, until this moment, I hadn't even thought, oh, somebody might cure him or they're studying him or something. Yeah. I thought it's just going to be, what, he turns into a stone man, he dies? Like, what is what is his arc? What is his point in the show? But it'd be interesting I, to see him in, in Old Town. Maybe I, he teams up with Sam. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the only it's possible be, right? explanation, right? We don't see Merwin. Yep. Right. So at all in the show, there's never been a Marwin. Not that I can recall. Okay. There's never been a Marwin, and so you know, I don't see, I don't see uh, Sam at least yet mm-hmm. coming into contact with someone and finding glass candles mm-hmm. and working those those angles to find more information. Um, clearly, he he finds a book. He reads it. He brings it back to his quarters. Do you remember he what he saw? It. Yeah, he sees a mountain of dragon glass mm-hmm. underneath Dragonstone. That's right. Very convenient. Uh... Very, yeah, right. <laughs> and, but hey, we and, gotta we gotta go. Like the show has to go. It's only two more seasons. Very and, quick episodes. We gotta cover a lot of ground and, here. And I mean, no one's ever seen this picture before. Like this is a restricted book that mm-hmm. just happens to have a picture of oh my dragon glass it, underneath so obvious, Dragonstone. Right. I mean, it's. But yeah, hey, it's so, a show. This is one of the things I we know. have to just allow. I, I know, I know, I know. But the show is yeah. going to show. Um, so we can come from here to the John and Sansa scene because they relate to each other, or we can try to do it chronologically. Yeah, no, I, we can go. We can jump over. Okay, because John Snow versus Sansa Stark. Yeah, troubles Great brewing. Fucking scene. Yeah, John's John's um, what was his uh, his line here? Dragon not... glass. He says uh, we need to find it. We need to mine it. We need to make weapons from it. That's what Jon Snow says to his assembled lords, uh, I assume in Winterfell. Yeah. That's probably Winterfell Hall. Mm-hmm. So it's him and Sansa holding court, right? Lady Mo- Mormont is there and all the... Being a ba- BA. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, and they've got all their bannermen, and they're talking about Dragonglass. And uh, Sansa and Jon go head-to-head over what how to deal with their loyal bannermen. Yeah. I mean, um, first thing to mention is that it's... Well, we'll talk about this next, actually. First thing to mention, mm-hmm. then, thing one. is um, John is a fucking leader. I mean... Do you think? The guy, the guy is... He knows what the fuck he's doing. I mean... And it's a very... Actually, it's a very interesting parallel that I see mm-hmm. between him and Tywin Lannister. Really? Because Tywin actually said um, earlier in the show... Um, he makes a very good quote yep. that's basically, um, you know, to sum it up, you know, I kill my kill my tre- traitorous enemies, yep. but if if they bend the knee, yep. you help them up, yep. or else no one will ever bend the knee ever again. That's right. They, he says that in the books, and he's yeah, trying, okay. Tywin Lannister is trying to say this as a lesson to Joffrey. Yeah. Because Joffrey's like, he's a traitor, off with his head, off with his head, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. and Tywin's like, when a, when a foe bends the knee to you, 
you, you offer his up. hand and bring him up. Otherwise, they will never bend to you. Like right. you have to offer clemency, or you'll be fighting. That's right. Yeah. To the so, bitter end. So that's a, I think that's a very good parallel. Mm. And I think fascinating. A, a, another parallel that I see is, you know, he he is Jon Snow. Yeah. Remember, he his whole life was hated by Caitlyn. Yep. For the sins of his quote unquote father. Yeah. And I think that's very strong that he notices that and says, I will not punish these sons mm. for the sins of their father. Interesting observation. So, so what do you what do you think? So the the issue on the table yes. is the Umbers and the Karstarks. Umbers and the Karstarks having been turn cloaks, essentially yeah. not being honorable bannermen to House uh -huh. Stark. They have lands and holdings. And yet that they've you held have, for thousands of years. That, and yet, on the other side, you have loyal men uh, of lesser rank, or maybe from I don't know who. I don't know that Sansa gets specific and names houses. She doesn't. She but just she just says, says more loyal people. So yeah. you have a big army. Certainly, there are people that stand out who have been very loyal. Right. Shouldn't we reward their loyalty? Where do you fall on that? Um, I think you know. In all honesty, I mm -hmm. think. Um, I think they both have valid points, but I think John, I think Ugh. John made the right decision and it shows because, um, all of his men kind of agree with him. You don't hear, um, Manderley mm. or any of the other, you don't see Lady Mormont getting up and going, that's it bullshit, Yeah, it right? doesn't really seem split. They, they're all kind of like, mm. yeah, that's. I mean, you, you're... It didn't seem overwhelmingly like, yeah, that's the right choice. They just were like, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree, but it, it, I think it shows that John cares more about the realm well, in reality. So I mean, I found myself, these families have, have been bannermen for the Starks for thousands of years, and, and I agree, one bad apple does not make a tree bad. You have to do something, though, or he looks like a weak leader. There has to be... And now, House Umber is staunchly for House Stark in the books. Yeah. Some of them well, are. No, there some, was, they were split. Some of Umbra them have to. Yep. Some of them have to fight with um, the Boltons. And I think Hothor, the skinnier, like, sort of looks like a vulture one, was one of the guys that was at Ramsey's Dread Fort early in the books during our Reek chapter. So, right. like, we know that Karstark and Umber were there. I believe I could be a little fo foggy about that, but I think that that's right. Um, but I did not read their behavior in the books is treachery. I thought that they were loyal bannermen in a rock in the hard place situation. Winterfell is burned and destroyed. They've yeah, got a man the on the show, outside, a man on the inside. In the, in the show, Small They're John They're straight Umber, up treacher treacherous, yeah, right? Small John Umber yep. is straight up treacherous. He, he yep. captures Rickon and brings him to yep. Ramsey. Yep. And um, I don't think that that's something, at least not in my understanding of the books, that's not something I assigned to House Umber. Right. On any branch of House Umber. Whereas the Car Starks are treacherous. Yes. Adolf is the yes, or is the of name course. of the of the patriarch. I mean, and, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you know, and he plans to sell out Stannis the Manus when um uh by pledging his fealty to Stannis and excuse me, trying to get Stannis to march on the Dread Fort and all this stuff. So the Car Stark stuff I see. Yeah. The Umber stuff I'm willing to give it to the show. Okay. Um I guess they're they're bad guys. But I found myself being like, mm, I don't know that John Reeds is a strong leader here. He seems like a short-sighted kid, like a boy commander to me. Um, you need like Rob, King Rob made like logical decisions and there were consequences for I don't know, stepping out of line or like he was willing. Yeah, but then he also decided to betray his oath of marrying a right. Frey and then married a, a Westerling mm -hmm. and then fucked up everything mm -hmm. so i mean yes i think that everyone makes good decisions and bad decisions yep. but it'll be interesting to see how it goes it, i think it definitely and i don't want to say it like this that it's not like they were not rallying behind rob because they absolutely were they were right absolutely um but it seems like john has really kind of convinced them all that the fight is not with the South right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he, he even says that. He's like, those are Southern southern lords with Southern armies. They're not coming up here any time in the snow. Right. Like, we need to focus on the real threat. Right. Uh, and on top of that, he fucking took back Winterfell. Right. How do you 
not get behind the the guy who takes back the so king in the north. I mean, the, the I, throne in the north. It could just be that, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, John, I want him to be, I don't know. I want him to be bigger than life. I want him to be great. And he just reads to me as very Black. pouty. Yeah, and kind of a whiny. I, I don't like it when dudes are whiny bitches. And he yeah. is. He's just kind of like, meh. I think they should keep their castles, me. But anyway, I know he's a fan favorite. Everyone's gonna so, stop listening. Okay. Whatever, guys. I think Sansa <laughs> so, makes some good points. I, um, I don't know how I would vote either. I think that loyalty over generations and being true Northmen also matters. Yeah. You know what I would do is award the castle to someone worthy in the house. You know, if it was a second son or something. Oh, uh, keep it in the family. Yeah, keep it in the but... family. But, but like, like the older brother lineage. that should inherit no longer gets to inherit if he was the, you know, umber that went, if it was small John and he's next in line to inherit yeah. as Lord of Winterfell. No, fuck you. Your little brother gets it. Well, um, he says that both of the traitor, the people who made the traitor decisions oh, hey. died in battle. Oh, okay. Well, that so, makes it easy. So, I mean, it's it going to stay in the family, gonna but not to the traitors. Okay. I'm traitors. okay with that. And, and he says that he says yep. the he goes, they both died in battle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I give it to the kids, yep. basically, to keep it in the family. So he does do that. We're going to have to fill up our drinks with more soda because I'm getting to the bottom and there's just like two inches of, of gross. Gunk. Yeah, yeah, it's like broken uh -huh. up cookie. Uh -huh. and um, I don't like, want to drink this. Yeah. It's so gross. Yeah, it's, it's pretty thick. bad. Here you it's go. It's thick and gross. So <laughs> that's what she said. Um, so another thing to mention about that scene yeah. was Sansa's hair... I was just going to say this. Is taken directly from Cersei's hair back when she had long hair. What was the thing that she says about her? She says, uh, I don't admire her, but I learned a lot from her. I learned her. a lot from her. Yeah. So Which is our, scary. Our picture for tonight, the little mashup picture, yeah. I did a trio. Three heads of the dragon? No. But I've got Cersei when she had the long braid. I've got Sansa's hair from this episode. Yeah. And in between them, I have Daenerys. Okay. And Daenerys has the triple braid and it's gorgeous. And I think her hair is very much like three heads of the dragon. And I, so it might just be a hairstyle in Westeros. I, has Sansa ever had her hair like this before? Not that I can remember. I so think it's, uh, maybe I think it's, it's a thing. Maybe. I, I think it's <laughs> very much like a subtle, like, yep. like Sansa's the character didn't do it. She didn't say, right. I want to be like, Oh, Cersei. so it's going to be subconscious. Right? I think it's like a subconscious thing. Just like, I think Ramsey's last words. What were they? Were, you know, you, you may kill me something like this, but I'm already a part, like I'm a part oh, of you. So we're, we're leaning heavy evil with Sansa. I, I don't She's got influences of Ramsey, influences, influences of Cersei. evil queen. Yeah. I think oh, I think she's kind of the falling cunning on of this little finger in there. She's falling on this like kind of interesting, I interesting. Be and I think I think Littlefinger has been kind of planting seeds of this yeah. all the time. He makes some comment like it should be you leading Winterfell, yep. you know. Uh, also because he wants he to fuck her. He seemed a little flat. He seemed a little flat to me in this episode. Well, I think Sansa shut him down big time. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sa Sansa goes basically like, "What do you want?" Okay, yeah, blah, She's blah, blah. She's getting sick of his shit. And then she says, no need to say anything, little finger. I'll assume it was something clever. Oh, yeah, that was and a great was, line. Then, that was a great yeah, line. And then the, the scene ends or something mm. along those lines. Oh, poop um, and soup. Yeah, why are we drinking this? Ugh, mm. gross. Oh, that's real nasty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Little ball. Oh. Yeah, we might be done with this. Might be done with that. <laughs> might be done. Uh, moving to Cersei, then. Right? If we've got Sans, we can go to Cersei. Are we okay. done with Sansa? I'm interested. So I'm done. With I'm Sansa. interested with Jorah. I'd never considered that he's at Old Town to get healed. Okay, it's not where I thought he was going to end up. Uh, I thought he was a prisoner. This is a new wrinkle for me. The old, the old. Town I don't really have spend prisoners, right? Well, I, mean, I don't know, but he was in a cell, and so it looked like a prison to me. Yeah, because he has one of the most contagious right. diseases in the world. I understand that my idea of quarantine. Is not applicable to what a like medieval quarantine I don't think they have be. hazmat yeah. suits exactly. and like yeah. tarps and tents. Might be, might be. <laughs> that one's on me. So, uh, so I think that's an interesting wrinkle. Uh, I'm looking for. I'm still very much looking forward to his storyline in the show. Yeah. I'm also really interested in Sansa's storyline in the show. 
Yeah. I Especially w- with all this like evil queen Ramsey, like little thing influence on her. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree. I'm interested to see where she falls. Uh, <coughs> you got a little poop and soup there? Oh, yeah. Gets Ooh. the back of the throat. Just really. Like there's like a little piece Burns of Burns a little bit. It sticks, stuck. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Really mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like after Ugh. you throw up and it Ugh. just stays in the back of the throat there. Ugh. Yep. There it's it funny. I couldn't stop farting all day today, too. It's just like. <laughs> You know. I have a recording of it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was such a great uh, montage. So Sansa, I'm very interested in looking, seeing where her arc goes. Yeah. Um, especially in the books, she is right now in the books the only living Stark without a wolf. So yes. I just want to remind you, all the wolves are still alive. And there's a question. It probably isn't true. That Grey Wind is still alive, but we have yet to see its body on on camera. They say that they chopped the phrase say that they chopped off Grey Wind's head and sewed it onto Rob. I think we see that. We don't see it. They say that they did it, but the last time we see Grey Wind, he's being cut free by Oliver Frey. I think uh, one of one Grey of, Wind is Rob's. Rob's. We, so we, I'm pretty sure we see we a, don't. a wolf's head on a body. Probably in the show you do. Yeah. In the show. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about the show. Yeah, in the show it's oh, different. So I'm saying in the book. book. Okay. So I'm saying in the book, uh, according to the books, yeah. Sansa is the only Stark that doesn't have a wolf. I've been wondering thematically what that means for her character as far as not having like the symbol of will she be less of a Stark? Because she doesn't have this connection. It's and it seems like they're pushing her in an evil queen it's, direction. It's certainly kind of feeling that way in the show. And she's got, you know, in the show and in the book, she's got Little Thing whispering poison in her ear. Yep. She's becoming a player. Now we're hearing that Cersei is one of her uh, unlikely heroes. Idols, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll be interested to see where her, uh, where her storyline story goes. goes. Yeah. yeah, but in the books, there's a, a crackpot theory in the world. And I don't know... I, I would love it if Grey Wind is still alive. He's probably not. They probably did decapitate him. But the last time we physically see the wolf he's in the books, free. he's being cut free. And we learn later he savaged several guards. Uh, and then we hear from a very unreliable narrator, a drunk with um, super headaches, that they sewed on. He heard that they sewed on a wolf's body. He never saw it with his own eyes. Um, and the last word that King Rob says as he dies is Grey Wind. And so could he be warging? Warning into Grey Wind. And would some part of Rob, King Rob, still be alive in his wolf? And could his wolf, which was in the Riverlands at the Twins, meet up, meet up with, with Nymeria? Nymeria and the wolf pack? So this is yeah. one of the things in Winds of Winter that I'm looking forward to okay. knowing for sure. Is Grey Wind still alive? Uh, probably not. But if it is, uh, man, I'm all about the Stark family reunion. What kind of people, reunion. like, cut the head off of their dead old king and the then sew it suck. on sew it on to the, the it's phrase just, suck let's just think it oh it's just ridiculous anyway yep back to the show yep cersei we talked about cersei we talked about sansa yep. i think it's a great segue to move into cersei cersei um the only really cool thing that i want to say about cersei right now Ugh. yeah is Ooh, did you bad. see how awesome the queen's guard armor looked i didn't i didn't pay particular attention to it if, if we you, saw Gregor. Yeah, we saw we saw, that. Uh, we, saw, we see the mountain mm-hmm. standing next to her in like this all black yep. armor with like silver, maybe Inlay. like rose. Okay. Not, it's not a rose, but you know. It's it, going to be a lion, like a, right? It, was, it wasn't a lion. It was not like a stag, a, not a lion? It, nope. It was just kind of like twirly yeah. crest, like, like a little crest, just a decorative breast, sure. breastplate crest. But I thought it was interesting that she's wearing all black. Yeah. And the Queen's Guard are wearing all black armor. Yeah. I think that's a very interesting parallel behind uh, A, they're not wearing gold. Yep. Right? Or red. Right. Or white. And B, they're not wearing white, which is the the symbol of of the King's Guard, but they're wearing the opposite of white. Nice. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, And of course. Dave, you're picking up on some stuff here. And of course, the whole scene with her. And you're on Greyjoy. What did you think about this? I popped a raging throner <laughs> um, when I saw that. And I just, you know, after reading the released, the, you know, pre release chapter of The Winds of Winter yeah. from um, the silence, Victorian, the, yeah, the Victorian's point of view. It's from uh, Aaron Greyjoy, uh, 
No, yeah, no, no. Uh, Aaron, damp hair. Aaron, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Aaron. This is being held prisoner. Um, but, from his, I mean, from his point of view. No spoilers. And then, yeah, right. We always <laughs> except do spoilers. Super except spoilers. Except super spoilers. <laughs> um, and I just think it's like that's that's how I picture Crow's Eye, yep. right? As just this cocky yep. motherfucker pure evil pure absolutely pure evil just. he walks in there and he's just like he's swinging his big dick around so you think that this show you're on is comparable to book you're on in I your think, mind they, they work I, I think they can work right okay. i think we're going to see show you're on get more and more evil and sadistic okay um, and I think this is a good setup for it because okay. he shows up and he's basically he's throwing quips back and forth and he makes a couple comments like, you know, why, uh, you know, I have two oh, good I've, hands. Yeah, he goes, you should, you know, you should hang out with someone who's, you know, <laughs> got a sword and two good hands. Right. And then he makes another comment, which I think is also a little foreshadowing where he says they say to him, but you killed your brother. And he goes, yeah, and it felt great. You should try it sometime. Right. To Cersei. But we, uh, so we are supposed to think that's Tyrion. Oh, no. I automatically You immediately thought, thought Jamie. That, yeah, I think he's he's trying to swing his big dick yeah. in front of Jamie. He oh, even, yeah. He even there makes, is a lot of machismo there. He even makes the comment like, you know, when you came to to, to Pike and killed all my king kinsmen, I right. was in awe because it was like a gorgeous dance. Right. Right. But I think he's like... I think he's absolutely throwing his oh bravado down. He's like, you know, fuck someone with two good hands. He's like, you Quick. should try killing your brother. Quick time out. Yeah. Uh, Gay of Thrones, the new episode of Jonathan's Gay of Thrones, yeah. uh, does a whole thing. They call Euron Crow's Eye uh, instead of Jared Leto. Jared let himself go for Euron Crow's Eye, and I love it. I think it's better than Drunk Uncle. But yeah. for me, he's still Drunk, drunk Uncle. Uncle. He just kind of cleaned his... His kind act up a little bit, yeah. yeah. He just kind of so, took a bath. So the si silence is a fucking badass Great looking, looking ship. ship. It's Great got this ship. like interesting thing on the front that yep. I saw on Reddit. Someone drew like a diagram yeah. that is like, everyone was like, what's that thing on the front of his ship? And this guy drew this little picture where it's this claw on a chain that shoots out, grabs another ship and brings it oh in. Oh my God. Um, I think it may be just a drawbridge or something, right. but it looks badass anyway. Yep, yep. And I'm kind of hoping it is a Yeah, chain. yeah. I mean, it's the show. You got to do cool stuff like that. It's got yeah. the little side sails that come right, out. Right, yeah. So it's it has this trio. Like, it's like huge uh -huh. cracking, gold cracking yeah. on the front. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he makes the comment, I'm the best captain of the 14 seas, yeah. you know, and he's so swinging the... his dick around. And then he goes and he says yep. he's going to get a gift. Yes. So we have to talk about the gift. For me, um, the show you're on yeah i think they're doing this kind of goofy villain okay. in the book he's pure primeval like yeah. he is he is the darkest of the dark he is worse than ramsey he is worse than he is absolute sadism yeah. he is he just thinks, evil he thinks he's god in yep. the show in the, in the and book. an evil torturing I mean, bloodthirsty the end of that of that release merciless chapter, he's god. standing on the bow of the silence yep. Basically screaming, I am God. Yep. Strapping. Wearing an entire mm -hmm. suit of Valerian steel armor. Armor, which until that moment, none of us knew even existed. Right. Or that it was possible or that to it was possible. forge into and he's a suit of armor. he's strapping the maimed and mutilated bodies of all of these different priests and holy men and women. To his, uh, to his ship. Strapping them <laughs> to the prow of all of these ships that are about to attack Old Town. Super spoilers, guys. I, yeah. Whatever. But... Yeah. But, like, he is sadistic. There is an evil incarnate to him yes. and, and just a sort of darkness um, and, he potentially, and a cunning. And he potentially has the dragon binder horn. And he doesn't do this, like, swashbuckling, like, goobity goobity stuff. And I think kinda that like that's Captain a fine. Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Like, I think Euron is more. Yeah, the Captain show. Jack. Okay. Yeah, mm. the show is more of a Captain Jack. Drunk Uncle Captain yeah, Jack. <laughs> Captain Jack, Drunk Uncle. That's who we have in the show. And mm. I think that that's a fine thing to have. The banter was really witty. Yeah. Uh, that's the. So, this is the big question. What gift I is think, he going to bring to Cersei? What do you think it's going to be? I think it could be the horn. I think it has to be. I mean... I think it absolutely has to so be. So the only thing we know about a horn yep. is Sam found one in like season two mm -hmm. um, at the Fist of the First Men. Mm -hmm. And so if the show attack on Old Town is accurate mm -hmm. and maybe he goes to Old Town and attacks, somehow mm -hmm. 
he gets the horn mm. from Sam okay. or some something. Okay. Right? I think yeah, I, I think it's gotta be the horn. It's or gonna be. Or it's an entire suit of Valerian so steel armor. It, I think it. So for for my money, it's on the dragon binder horn because yeah. what we have um, is Daenerys Stormborn landing on Dragonstone yes. with three fucking dragons in Fuck tow, yeah, yeah, and taking her rightful place uh, in her ancestral home. Yeah, I think the last words of the episode were amazing. Now it begins. <laughs> shall so shall we begin? Shall we begin? Shall oh, we I love begin? It. So so in order to even the balance, right? Yeah. Then you, if you're the Lannisters, you have like nothing left. The, yeah. She has Gregor, or, you know, the mountain, the mountain herself and a disaffected Jamie and, you know, a non-impressive army. Like yep. no one, you don't have anyone to inherit. There's no heirs. There's yep. no dynasty. She's, got, you, she's literally you surrounded by enemies. Yep. You get nothing. You have half of the Iron Fleet. Uh, Euron's half. So, so Danny's going to have Yara's half. So can we talk about that for a Please. second? Like, what fucking military strategy yep. that these two golden-headed retards yeah. are executing <laughs> right now? Dragonstone, I assume you mean Cersei and Jaime. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dragonstone, one of the most easily defensible castle, castles. Yep. Okay? One of the most significant castles in Westeros history. Yep. Okay? Is empty. Oh fuck! It was empty. It was fucking empty. It was, oh, and it's right oh, off the coast. It's, it's right, right off, off the coast yep. of King's Landing. It's like You'd spit in, from King's Landing. Like, it's in a perfect spot to attack King's Landing from. Or why don't they why have anyone there? Don't you send someone That's a great there? Point. That's a great point. To hold it. Oh, and and there's a guy. I don't who, even try to make sense of the show. And there's a guy, by the way, who yep. comes in with like you know, a hundred ships or a thousand ships, yep. whatever it is. Yep. You have no he's your navy. Own, he's your only. Yes, that's right. He's your only ally at this point. Yep. And he sails right past Dragonstone, and not only do you deny him, and right. tell him, "Now nah, we're not going to be allies. Like you got to prove yourself first. Right. But you don't. Nothing. You don't tell him, and he doesn't take Dragonstone. I mean, it's if, fucking empty. If you're Euron, so this is why you can't scratch the surface of the show too hard, right? Like you just can't. Because it all starts to crumble. If you're Euron and you're a true Ironborn, you take fucking Dragonstone. You don't. Stone. You don't saunter into the Queen's throne room and you know do this like dog and pony show with insults to Jamie. You march in with your fucking Ironborn and yeah. you take over the city. Yeah. And you also burn and pl pillage and rape and do everything else that you're gonna do up yep. the coastline on your way there. Yep. So which but would this, include Dragonstone. At this exactly. Point. Empty Dragonstone. Empty, empty, empty fortress. Empty the Citadel. Fortress. I. I didn't even think about the fact that it was empty. So yeah, I so don't... that that kind of pissed me off a little bit, yep. and it's just like military strategy. Oh, I'm so glad that on? like the show's annoying to you. It I've is, had but to it's like so unplug good. But what it's so, my it's so my critical though. thinking for yep, the show. But it's so good. I just so Cersei it. and Jamie, I love the painted map. I know that it's uh the most like on the nose way to do exposition, you, but I you, loved it. Did you see the meme? There was a meme posted on Reddit that was like, you know. Your world's crumbling around you, but you're now the queen, and you didn't have one of these as a kid. And it's a picture of Cersei standing on that like carpet, the carpet map yes. of the city that like every kid yeah, has. Yeah, that's yeah. like got the road <laughs> and, the, and the schoolhouse and shit. Oh my god, yeah, I love it. That was really funny. I think that I the map was wonderful. I mean, you know how nerdy I get about maps anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I loved that. And I that thought it was accurate too. And it was accurate. And I thought that there was a really it was a really great way. To bring the watchers up to speed and to talk about the power balance and who their allies are and yeah. what the plan is. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that, that was a wonderful way to do it. Um, Danny trailing her fingers across the big carved table at yep. Dragonstone, I thought was very beautiful as well. Yep. That whole scene, her sort of coming into her throne room, her coming it, into the castle as well. I think well it was done. a little bit stretched. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't need five minutes of them walking up the beach. I liked it. I, up I, to the I, doors. Sometimes up I the feel stairs. like you need you need that sort of you need that emotional beat. You need her, you know, pushing her fingers into the sand. Yeah. You need her to take a breath. Like shit's about to get real. Dragons and fire and armies. And so like we've just had a big exciting first episode. And yeah. so let's just take a breath. And like center okay. ourselves, I, calm before I the storm. I still think it was a little much. Okay. But um, I still enjoyed it. Okay. So, so uh, let's, let's see. We did. Yep. So um, mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about my unsung hero Please. of the show. 
Okay. Right now. I have a guess of who it is. But oh, yeah? Say. Do you? Yeah. Well, I'll, give, I'll, I'll do a quote that he says, and okay. then you can guess. Sure. Okay. Um, that fucking top knot isn't fooling anyone, <laughs> you bald cunt. Dog the bounty hunter. Uh, mm, kind of close. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Gay Jonathan calls him. That's what uh, Gay Jonathan calls him? The Hound, yeah. Yeah, Dog the, the Hound, of course. I think he's becoming awesome. He is. That um, was a really great scene, too. I, think, I have so much praise for the show. Who, who even am who, I? Yeah, who is this? I loved who it. I, I, you know, enjoyed I it this... so much, Dave. And I then enjoyed I, it I'm so the much. one talking about the things that I didn't like about Man, the show the, and the stupid military the world, strategy. Yeah, this the is, world comes full circle. This is this is weird. Yeah. So, uh, top so fucking not looking into the flames. This dude's whole life is being afraid, afraid of he fire. Make, he even makes that comment. He's like, it's my fucking luck that I'd end up with a bunch of fireworks. Yeah, and it's it's all like, like his, uh, like deep in his bones, he fears and hates and loathes fire. Yeah. And this motherfucker's looking and seeing shit. And do you remember what shit. he, do, what did um, he see? He sees, oh, he, first he says a wall and then yeah. he says, no, the wall. Oh. And then he says a castle by a sea. Or something along yep. those lines. And then he says, like, the army of dead or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, and and so, obviously, they know where they're going now. Um, but the other thing that I thought was really, really kind of heartwarming yep. and a good nod, I think, to the book theorists out there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, was that he digs the graves for, yes. these, for these people that yep. he stole their silver. Is that who? So this is this is the house yep. that he and Arya come upon. Okay, in the show, and this in, is show stuff. Show, I don't know show about stuff. it. This is show or I don't stuff. remember it. Um, they come upon this father and daughter. Yeah. And I think they get some mead and stuff like that. And then he like strikes the father. Like I don't think he stabs him. I think he just hits him. Yeah, and back steals or silver. something. And Arya's like, they need that. You know, they need to that live. to live. And he goes, they'll be dead before uh, come winter anyway. And then they leave them like, yeah, with no a... money. And then we see them dead. Yeah. Curled up in a corner. And I think... Uh, That's Derek why Dun there was all that lingering, like he's staring at these dead bodies. For me, I didn't yep. connect it. I didn't yeah. have... I don't have that yeah, like Barrett, show... Barrett, you know, he says something like, oh, they got killed or something. And Barrick says, I see uh, a father who couldn't bear to watch mm -hmm. his daughter suffer through winter with no food and took you know and ended it for both of them right and um and i think without that silver they maybe with that silver they could have had enough food to, yep. to last through the winter or you know at least the beginnings right. of winter so um, and and sander feels bad about that remember because this is sander now this is not the hound that's right this is we did that whole Sander versus right. the Hound episode, and I think Sandor is starting go to... Go listen to our Sander go uh, versus go, the go Hound back. episode, Westeros Wineverly. Somewhere back there. Yeah. I um, forget what we made for it, but... Oh, Dog's Head Daiquiris. Dog's Head it's Daiquiris. a very good episode. Oh, that is a good one. Yeah, and we prove why he's still alive in the book, so yes. go and listen. And we, and we nod to this mm -hmm. theory... Yep. The, the grave, grave digger. digger theory, which okay. was nodded to in the show... I thought that was a good move. When he, when they, when he digs the graves, which was good. And I liked... That um, Thoros, Th um, Thoros of Mir mm -hmm. comes out and kind of helps him yeah. bury yeah, the yeah, bodies. Yeah. And is Thoros the one with the top knot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not how I picture him at all, but that yeah. makes more sense that yeah. that was Thoros. So I think, um, yeah. and this is just prediction yep. for the future. Sure, sure. Um, so in the in the books, Beric Dondarrion gives his last resurrection kiss of life to Caitlin Stark. Yep. I think he's going to give it to Jon Snow. We have, a, so there's a, in Entertainment Weekly or an E! News or some... Did they ruin this? There's some article, and I brought excerpts of it. I okay. figured we'd talk about it after because it's it gets a little spoilery, but it yeah. like kind of unlocks some stuff. It might okay. have been an accidental spoiler well, by from, George. From the Winter Is Here mm -hmm. um, trailer, yep. we see like, we see Beric, Thoros... Sandor and we believe Jon Snow all kind of fighting the army of the dead, mm -hmm. which we assume is now at Eastwash because okay. they make this comment um, um, about going to the you know the wall by the sea, which is mm. Eastwash. Oh yeah, that's right, by the, the sea, castle by, by the, the sea. sea. Yep, Eastwash yep. by the sea. Um, so we believe that's happening, but then you know in that same trailer we see what I think is Benjamin Stark's horse. Riding away with one person, not with a bunch of people. Right. And so, Dave, look I at may, you. I, I, 
theorize yeah. that maybe Beric is about to die. He sees Jon Snow dying after getting killed by a white again or something. Yeah. And gives him his last the resurrection. Kiss. And then Benjen somehow comes out of nowhere, grabs Jon, and they ride off or, or something along those lines. So, okay. The... This is the quote. This is from an interview in Time. It looks okay. like it's a Time Entertainment interview uh, with George Martin, and it came out Spoilers. very recently. It's very spoilery, um, but you know it also ties into what we're talking about right now. Lay it on us. Yep. So uh, the quote is: "Poor Beric Dondarrion, who is set up as the foreshadowing of all this. Every time he's a little less Beric. Every time he comes back." His memories are fading, he's got all these scars, and he's becoming more and more physically hideous because he's not a living human being anymore. His heart isn't beating. His blood isn't flowing in his veins. He's a white, but a white animated by fire instead of by ice. Now we're getting back to the whole fire and ice thing. George Martin. Yeah. What? The question was, are you able to have these walls in your mind uh, between the show and between the books? Uh, for instance... Your Daenerys is different than Amelia Clark's Daenerys, uh, you know, and so the show is sort of, you know, a different thing. Yeah. And he says that he has arrived at that point and the walls are up in his mind. I don't know that they were there necessarily from the beginning. At some points when David and Dan and I had discussions about which way we should go, I would always favor sticking with the books while they would favor making changes. I think one of the biggest changes would have probably been when they made the decision to not bring Caitlin Stark back as Lady Stoneheart. That was probably the first major diversion of the show from the books. And, you know, I argued against that. And David and Dan made their decision. In my version of the story, Caitlin Stark is re-imbued with a kind of life and becomes this vengeful white. So no one has ever taught... We've never heard him. I've never heard him talk about Caitlyn like this. Right. And I've been wondering at what her motivations are. We have... Well, I She's mean, in the Riverlands. We did spec We did uh, theorize that she's going to start raising an army in the Riverlands because yep. what the, in the she's books... She's sort of taken over the Brotherhood Without Borders. Yeah, and in the books... And militarized like, them what, even more or, or given them a purpose. What the fuck is going on in the Riverlands in the mm -hmm. books right That's now? That's right. We don't know. We assume that, that Lady Stoneheart is now amassing some large army to maybe attack the phrase or To something. do a reverse Red Wedding right. is what we're calling it. So instead of Arya Stark bringing gallons of poison wine for yep. the phrase disguised as Walder Frey, probably in the books what's going to happen is Lady Stoneheart is going to lead the Brotherhood Without Borders banners uh, in an uprising at River Run during yeah. a wedding ceremony between the Freys and the Lannisters and do a, a reverse red wedding situation. But um, all of that is sort of being built up and hinted at in the books. We never get this explanation that Caitlyn Stark is um, a white, a vengeful white who galvanizes a group of people around her and is trying to exact her revenge in the Riverlands. This is still the quote. David and Dan made a decision to not go in that direction in their story, pursuing other threads, but both of them are equally valid, I think, because Caitlin Stark is a fictional character and she doesn't <laughs> exist. So you can tell either story about her. <laughs> and so he talks uh, about the Red Wedding a little bit, and it said, uh, one of the questions, did Lady Stoneheart come about because it was so hard to say goodbye to a permanent, uh, a permanent goodbye to Caitlin? Yeah, maybe. That might have been part of it. But also, it, it's the dialogue that I was just talking about. He was uh, talking about this dialogue with other fantasy writers. Uh, and here I've got to get back to Tolkien again. And I'm going to seem like I'm criticizing him, which I guess I am. It's always bothered me that Gandalf comes back from the dead. The Red Wedding for me in Lord, uh, the Red Wedding for me in Lord of the Rings is the Mines of Moria when Gandalf falls. It's a devastating moment. And I didn't see it coming when I was 13. It just totally took me by surprise. Gandalf can't die. He's the guy that knows all of the things that are happening. He's one of the main heroes here. Oh, God. What are they going to do without Gandalf? Now it's just the hobbits and Boromir and Aragorn. Well, maybe Aragorn will be okay. But this is just a huge moment. It was a huge emotional investment. And then in the next book, he just shows up again. 
And it was six months between the American publications of these books, which seemed like a million years to me. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. the guy who takes <laughs> 15 years to, to release publications. Oh, when did all Dance right. come out? 2011. Oh, we won't even think about it. Oh, God. Uh, so all that time, I thought Gandalf was dead. And now he's back, except he's Gandalf the White. Nah, he's more or less the same as always, except he's more powerful. And that always felt a little bit like a cheat. And as I got older and considered it more, it also seemed to me that death doesn't make you more powerful. That's in some ways me talking to Tolkien in the dialogue, saying, yeah, if someone comes back from being dead, especially if they suffer a violent, traumatic death, they're not going to come back as nice as ever. So that's what I was trying to do, and what I'm still trying to do with the Lady Stoneheart character. And Jon Snow, too, they say, is drained by the experience of coming back from the dead on the show. And he says, right. And poor Beric Dondarrion, who is set up as the foreshadowing all of all of this. And every time he's a little less Beric, his memories are fading and he's got all these scars and he's becoming more and more physically hideous because he's not a living human being anymore. His heart isn't beating. This is a cold hands thing. Yeah. Right? Like these are the, these are the whites up in the north, except he's telling us that Beric Dondarrion is a fire white. He's a fire white, yep. Which means John is a fire white too. So we're going to have ice and fire. Fire mm. whites and ice whites, which I have to say, Dave, intersects beautifully with the shit I have uncovered about moat fucking Kalen. It ties in tight as a motherfucker. Like, I cracked the fucking code on this. Oh, yeah? Yes. Yeah? And I think that's what our next episode has to be about. We can, you know... We'll do, we'll do like a season two, uh, yeah. season seven, episode two brief yep. recap, well, and then we'll talk about Moat Kalen. We'll figure it out. You and I will figure out the scheduling. All right. Uh, but we have a Moat Kalen episode that okay. I think... And now... So I was working on this Moat Kalen stuff. I was yeah. interested in it. And then George comes out with this interview... And he tells us that Beric Tondarian is a fire white. I didn't know that. Like, I mean, the yeah. writing is on the wall, but you never get confirmation of these things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now, so we have these two magics, fire magic and ice magic, in conflict with one another that have necromancy and have undead army potential yeah. and have power in the world. And this pendulum is swinging, right? Back from ice to fire, from fire to ice, the birth of the dragons, the shattering of the moon, all this stuff. And you go back to the very, very first book, and it's a song of ice and fire. The whole thing has been building yep. to this stuff. And this knowing that Caitlin Stark, Lady Stoneheart, Beric Tondarian, and ultimately Jon Snow are going to be fire whites is, I think, very enlightening. And also the idea that, according to George, they become less human, less, less of, of themselves. themselves. And all that stuff was there with Beric. You know, he has that conversation in the books with Thoros where he's yeah. like... I can't do this anymore. I can't remember who I was. I, yeah. You know, like, six is too many times. And then he gives the kiss of fire life to Caitlyn Stark, and Beric dies, and Caitlyn rises after being in the water for three days. And so... And all of that, George is saying, all of that was building up to, you know, the Lady Stoneheart stuff, to the John resurrection. To the resurrection. John resurrection, yep, to the, to the, to the battle yep. of ice and fire. He is building this on, on yeah. some solid rock. So, very exciting interview that we found, or, you know, that recently came out. It's a little spoilery. Yeah, and, uh, definitely seems a little spoilery. I never thought of them as, I mean, there's always I, a balance, I, but I never... I never made that connection, that white... A fire right? white, a fire white, yeah, right. But, and but George fucking sense. called him a white. But it makes it makes perfect sense. Yep. I mean, Melisandre brings back John, yep. and it's it's yeah, it's it's fire magic. Mm -hmm. She's the red reward. And um, one more thing. Yes. Maybe we can end on unless okay. there's other things. Is there anything else in the show? I'm trying to that remember. you can think there's, of. There was so much in the show that I really loved. Uh, we can talk quickly about the um the bet that. D and D, one of their he one of them lost Fuck. to their daughter. Yes, the uh, worst part. So I glazed <laughs> over it because it's the fucking worst. Oh. Ed Sheeran cameo. Oh, Ed we, Sheeran, we won't have what? to talk about it much, but what are you we can doing touch in this show, dude. We, Why are you here? We oh my can god. touch on the fact that Arya oh my god. is having some nice shadow moments mm. with um with the Jake and Hagar that that we see in the books. Okay. Um. She shows up to this random group of yeah. Lannister men 
yeah. and you know they offer her bread, they offer her food, and, yep. and, and kind she of camaraderie. Ate of their, she ate of their salt, um, their meat, salt and meat, meat or whatever it is, yeah, salt and bread. Yeah. Um, but I think it's something that non Ed Sheeran of the Lannister group <laughs> says um, that really kind of resonated with me, which was. My, he says, my mother always said, be kind to a stranger and a stranger will be kind to you. And she is the stranger. She is the stranger. She is Dave, of the pick- house and black and white. God, she you're is picking up on this the stuff, god man. of death. And you're eating the little show breadcrumbs, I am. man. I'm eating all those breadcrumbs. You're crumbs. pulling a Tana on the show. <laughs> I am, I am. <laughs> and, and, and not only is that pretty important because i think she recognizes she that. totally so she sits down right like the she way i read that scene, she's gonna them. kill them yep and instead they're like just a bunch of dudes just wearing a red cloak or whatever yeah. Yeah. and then they like they're super nice to her and they're talking about their lives these could be winterfell men yep they're in the snow yep they could have been anybody yeah and i think as soon as as soon as that guy says that about the yep. stranger she's like oh shit the stranger's uh, telling you, send you a message. That's right. He's like, the stranger sending me a message. She's like, I'm a faceless man. That's my, that's my calling. That's my God, yep. quote unquote. And then she, and then she takes a bite yep. of the squirrel. She decides not to eat them. Right. Or not to, <laughs> not to kill them. them. She, <laughs> she eats... might eat them. If she eats Ed Sheeran, I am quitting the show forever. <laughs> she decides not to kill them. About... She eats of the squirrel the and stupid... passes it along. Yeah. Um, the body. What but is this? what I thought was an interesting parallel, at least maybe I'm connecting crackpot here. Yeah. But it was very kind of parallel to when she saved Jake and Hagar and Rogue and Biter. Yes. Because she didn't know who the fuck they were. That's right. They were strangers to her. That's right. And she And they freed, were dangerous strangers. They were dangerous strangers, but she frees them yep. from being burned alive. And then Jake and Hagar repays that kindness yep. by saying, three, Give me three names. Yep, three lives. Yeah. I don't know. That's such a that's so interesting. So maybe the show is actually doing things and not <laughs> just ruining something I love. Um, I think it is. The, I mean, it, they did some good stuff. They did some yeah. really good stuff. And now that I can, it is a me thing. I'm always a hardcore, the book is better than the movie you, person. And and they make choices that I wouldn't have made if I was making the show. But I think you've made the same evolution that George has made now, where you can yeah. finally separate it the two. It has to be different. Yeah. It has yeah, to be different. It's its own thing. Yeah. And, and I think that's why George that is I not love. going to release yes. The Winds of Winter. No, he will if it's I done. I, I hope he so. will. Because, oh God. I mean, take your time. It's brilliant. And I'm very much looking forward to it. But, oh, I just can't wait to read it. He ran out of yarn. There's going to be so and much. And there, no, <laughs> there have been no... All the His cats... typewriter ran out of yeah, ink. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> His, His word processor That's is right. dying. That's right. Uh, uh, so, Ed Sheeran. Uh, my first thought was, why the fuck are you in here? Second thought, I've never wanted to see someone murdered brutally and violently so much in my entire life. Oh. Thirdly, uh, did David or Dan, like, do they have a teenage daughter and one of them lost a bet or, like, Hello, they need to, you. yeah, and they're just trying to, like, kiss up to their kid or something, and they're like, fine, yeah, we'll maybe. put him in here. Uh, How did he get in the show? Why is he in the show? Speaking of him, did you recognize yes. the song? It's his, it's one of his stupid songs. No. What song is it? It's, it's. It's um, hands of gold are good and cold, oh. but the touch of a woman is warmer or something along That's those right. lines. That's right. That did stick out to me, but so I was too, uh, too filled oh with God, rage. Yeah, right. I was too filled with like, please just so stab you know, him in the tongue. In, in the books, mm-hmm. that song is about Shay and, and Tyrion. Tyrion. That's right. And I think it was kind of a nice... Um, Why put it in here? Because I think they kind of flipped it, yeah. and it's not talking about that Lannister brother. I think it's talking about... About Jamie and his, Jamie golden, and his hand. golden hand, mm. and how the yep. touch of a woman, his sister, is yep. warmer. Yep. Um, and I think that's a, that may be a stretch. Yeah. No, I think but, that, and I um, think that in the books, George is one of the things that he's weaving so well is this um, similarity duality. between yeah the the Lannister brothers. Yeah. Because Tyrion, you know, kills with hands of gold. Yeah. Uh, and I think the, his love. And right. I think Jamie is going to kill with his hand of gold, his love, yeah. which is his like sister. A super fist. In the Valencon. Oh, God. A, a big fist oh, God. of gold. Speaking of fisting, of fisting. Speaking of big fisting. And unless you have anything else you want to touch on. Uh, scale of one to ten. Who? <laughs> okay. The... The fist motion, <laughs> David's doing the over his own hand and like pushing. Yeah, we see. So uh, the, unless you wanted to enumerate the ways in which you would enjoy seeing Ed Sheeran die, 
Uh, we can move on to what I think should be the last thing we talk about. Okay, let's do it. The last and maybe the best. Ooh. Something that I, was amazing in the show that I didn't cover already? I love them so much, Dave. I love them so fucking much. Tormund, Giants, Bane, oh. and Brian of Tarth. <laughs> I am just all about it. I'm shipping that everywhere. Yes, uh, yes, yes. And uh, it took this total, like, you're a lucky boy twist when Podrick gets beat to shit beat and, up, like, yeah. kicked into the snow. Uh -huh. And Tormund is just like, oh, <laughs> you're a lucky boy. And I'm just, you know, and he's all eyebrows up well, and Brian's all scowl face. They say Tormund fucked the bear. Oh, my God. He is all about Brian, and I love this. Like, this is a thing that only can exist in the show, and I love it so much. And so the show is doing this the same thing with Euron, I think, as it's doing with Torment. They're taking a larger-than-life character and making him kind of goofy and, like, you know, the, yeah. kind of jokey. A little bit more, maybe real-world believable. Maybe, they're not, they're yeah. not really, like... Modern, perhaps. Mo yeah, modern. That's yep. maybe a good word. And he, it. you know, because he's like... Nah, nah, nah. And I mm. think real Tormund is... You know, he's... For me, he's, he's a larger-than-life guy. He's not goofy. He, he's not a goofy ginger, he, okay? <laughs> he made some comment, <laughs> too, when... When when, uh, jo when uh, John gives him the castle of Eastwatch or something. Yeah, I he guess we're... Wild, no, not Wildlings. I, I, I guess we're... Men's of the Night's Watch now. I guess now. we're the Night's Watch now. That's yeah. what he says. Because they like, give him the kiss. Oh, that's oh my great. God. That's so, so funny. Yeah, that's great. So you're, yep, the, you're a lucky lad or whatever he says to, to Pod. I just, I am, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing, please, 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 more Brian and make, Torment. Make them a thingy. Oh my God. I, you know, have them fight together back to back. Like, that's what I want to see. You know, and as they slaughter people, him with some giant, I don't know, wildling axe or something. And her with her sword, just have making googie eyes at her. I think that would be so great. Uh, Sansa, Evil Queen. We're on Evil Queen Watch. Oh, yeah. We're on... Okay. What's oh, things my... Things we're looking out for. The dragons... So, they are, to borrow a Brendan B. Fish, and I know it's not, like... They are a force multiplier. They're impossible yes. to beat. If right. If Danny comes into town with three fucking dragons... Yes. Nobody can stand yeah, against her. I, I was having this discussion with people at work... Um, who also watched the show yep. and and he's like dude what is a hundred nigh what is a thousand nigh what are the largest amount yep. of ships yep. that you could ever possibly think of going to do against three dragons nothing the, not a the damn biggest thing. danger to a ship at sea is fire yep right and these things are Fly. mobile flying fire yep. and even okay they take out one ship at a time all they got to do is circle the outside yep. and everything on the inside is going to eventually burn and yep. get crashed yep. and stunk. So, so yeah, I, I don't know what somebody steals a dragon. Somebody, somebody gets a dragon or the dragon binder horn. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I yeah. think Euron has to be getting the dragon binder yeah. horn or they kill a dragon. And then yeah. that's how the whites maybe get an ice dragon No, oh. where they bring one back. And I guess they could use the teleporter to take the dragon to the north, since that's what they do now. Yeah. How would they get a dead dragon from or, a southern fight? Or, you know, maybe they fly the dragons to the north, and that's right. when they mm. die, you know. I mean, but my money there. my money is on Dragon Binder Horn. Yeah. And um, on yeah, Evil be, Queen Sansa Watch. Evil Queen Sansa. Yeah, Brian yep. and Torment. What else? The Super Assassin Arya. Other What's thing, she doing next? What is she doing next? We don't know. So Sam finds the map of Dragonglass conveniently yes. on his... Uh, he's, he's, he's like, I got to get a raven to John. What I think... So one of Maybe the things... Maybe that's where the boat sex happens <laughs> that Reddit is all up in arms about. Oh, God. I don't know any of this. You don't know about the boat sex meme? No. The the boat sex meme is... What is the boat sex meme? Uh, There's everyone... So... When they were shooting the show, mm -hmm. because people were so obsessed with the show, they somebody had to, always sneaks up on a hill and yeah, videotapes right. it or something. So they had to. Sh they actually shot multiple scenes, yeah, differently <laughs> to throw off the paparazzi. Oh, that's so funny. So they shot things that will never oh, be used on purpose, right, right? Right. And maybe they didn't actually act anything out. Maybe they were just like, "Ha, this is never going to be used. Let's just stand here together on a beach." Right. But so one of the big leaks is there's a picture of John and Daenerys. In front of a like a like a small boat yeah. on a beach, and they're like kind of smiling at each other. And so Reddit French went nuts. Reddit went nuts and was like, "Boat sex, boat sex, we're gonna see boat sex." <laughs> so now anytime there's a fucking comment about oh, John and hilarious. Danny, it's always like God. boat sex. 
Um, people were making shirts. It's like boat sex. It's just a picture of a boat. And, oh, the ephemera anyway. of, of nerd culture I is know, right? my favorite thing. Anyway, yep. that was season one. Uh, yep. Season s- so season the seven, dragon, somebody's, episode one. Yeah, somebody, dragon is a force multiplier. Dragon somebody a else multiplier. has to control a dragon. And yeah. just from a cinematic standpoint, dragons fighting each other, right? Like yeah. we need... Yeah. We need to have dragons fighting each other, which yeah. means in addition to a dragon binder horn, we're going to need a dragon yeah. rider. And, and think about it. We're um, going to need somebody to control this dragon. Think about uh, why there's only seven episodes this season. It's because they needed to spend the budget for two episodes <laughs> on CGI. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's probably not accurate. Yeah, no, but, I can I mean, see it. Uh, look at look at the I mean the silence looked amazing. Oh it really right? did. And this it's visually stunning. Yeah. The world building. And anybody that, you know, is even a little bit into sci fi, you see a poorly made or low budget movie and you have fur, you know, like uh, armor and leather and fur and it yeah. just looks like crap, right? It just this looks... Done right. And the set is terrible yeah. and the lighting is wrong. And so to get the scenes at Winterfell, at Dragonstone, at yeah. King's Landing, the big like Google map of Cersei standing on Westeros, to do all that stuff right is a real credit, I think, to, to HBO. They've got me, yeah. man. They've got their claws in it. They've yeah. got the silences claw. Silences yeah, claw catapult. chain. Catapult grabber. <laughs> it's in me, Dave. I can't wait for the, for next week's episode. Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, nerds, nerds and, and neckbeards. Neck we've converted Tana into a show watcher. I'm in. I'm in. And I was we've absurdly made me a show psychic. skeptic. <laughs> Every wait long enough, and everything that was new is old, or old the, is new again. The North Pole will soon be the South Pole, <laughs> and the South Pole will soon be the North Pole. But oh. thanks everyone for watching. Yeah, and we'll join see us you, next time. We'll see you next week, where we yeah. talk about probably we have to do two, a Moat Kalen episode, and, Moat Kalen. and we have to do a season. We'll do episodes for every season, um, but we'll talk about schedule. But there's yes. a Moat Kalen episode that we have to do. I'm so excited about and it. We'll, we'll see it soon. So anything uh, before we go, anything you want to shout out uh, um, in the Tana Ford Designs world? I am working uh, on a Venomverse story for Marvel. Venom now. Yes. Moved over yeah. from Silk to Venom. Yeah. Well, it's all sort of in the spider yeah, office. The spidey. Speaking of Spider-Man, uh, did you see the new Spider-Man? No, so no spoilers. Okay. Kirsten refused to see it with me the week it came out. Why? She, does, she doesn't like going to movie theaters uh, the week things come out because... Too many people or Too something? many people. She hates people. And, okay. you know, we like having the whole theater to ourselves. It- Oh. And then we took a trip. No. <laughs> no arm through the hand. What are we calling this gesture? This no, gross, no gross fisting No gross gestures. This is the gestures. golden hand <laughs> fisting motion. No, nothing like that. Uh, but then I then we went on vacation to NOLA for five days. And yeah. so, you know, now we're back. And uh, so, so I'm hoping to see, see it. Spider-Man. Because okay. Cindy Moon is in it. She's only in it for a minute. And it's only Cindy. But uh, very exciting from what I hear from the cool. fandom. No spoilers, but... I'm excited to see that movie and look out for my story in Venomverse. I don't know that I can say Duck? too much about it. Duck is underway. My colorist is yeah. getting back to me with pages. Yep. Okay. I had uh, another batch of pages come back. You're not coloring today. It yourself? So I am sort of color assisting, okay. uh, but I found a colorist from Jordi Belair. Uh, anybody that knows comics will know Jordi. She is one of the most talented and hardest working colorists in all of comics. And she has a studio in Ireland called Red Cube Studio, I think, uh, with Declan Chalvey. And one of their interns uh, I met in Chicago. And she's coloring the book for me, with me. Uh, and so it's very exciting stuff. So it's all behind the scenes, right? Like, right, right. But it's, it's I'm, I'm George. I'm grinding away on it. You know, grinding deadlines away. Deadlines don't work for you, huh? <laughs> That's it, man. I, uh, I did back. Deadlines. And, uh, I do. I am expecting, I think, a custom uh, duck. Yeah thing i forget which reward I you're got, gonna I got and a big one uh, my plan is because so much time will have passed from when i kickstarted it to when it will be released yeah that i'm going to touch base there's only 200 backers so i'll touch base with my 200 backers which is a totally manageable number yeah and see what everybody wants and yeah. you know i have uh, grand plans for how to uh deliver the book when it is finally time but cool. yeah it's Things are working in what the background. What about your uh, Patreon? You had like a oh a drink, my drink and draw, drink, drink and draw with mm-hmm. Tana. How's I that have going? to. It's going really great. So I've so far I've had the same group of like 
three or four people with a couple of new faces every time. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a Friday night. We hang out. It's like going to a bar, but it's an internet bar and yep. you don't have to drink alcohol. We just hang out and shoot the shit and I draw and we talk. And nice. so uh, there should be another one coming up in the next couple of weeks, but I haven't announced what Friday is going to work because I'm doing a bit of traveling. So uh, that's what's new with me. What is going on with you, David? Uh... The Not new? much. You still got the beard. I still got the beard. Yeah, still got the yeah. beard. It's I'm, looking good. Uh, I'm scuba diving a lot more. Oh, now, yeah. Which we, is happening. You had a scuba yeah. dive. We, we went, almost uh, podcast, but you had a scuba dive that's session. That's right. That's right. I went. And you posted uh, a video and it looks Friday, so scary. Friday, Friday night dive. Um, and this Sunday, I'm going to do a wreck dive. Um, oh, nice. So going to see one of the sunken, one of the old, it was an old tanker that uh, they decommissioned. It's like a. I don't know, 50 yeah. year old ship. Did they sink it and turn it into a reef? They did. They sunk <gasps> it and turned it into an artificial reef. I just reef found out about this today. Off of uh, Fort Lauderdale. It's called Lady Luck. Um, and they, so the idea is they sink it to the bottom. You take this ship, yeah. take out all the like oil or whatever, polluted yeah. stuff, and then you just sink it to the bottom of the ocean. Yep. And after a couple of years, a reef builds. It's a way of like creating oh, man made. artificial reef. Yeah. Artificial. And you get yeah. these pictures, Google it. Uh, artificial reef they do this in new york so they take decommissioned subway cars this is what i found out about today and they just like take them on a barge out to the ocean and then they dump them one at a time using a crane into the water and they sink to the bottom and they have pictures of like scuba divers going through it after one year it looks like this it's a little you know marbly gross five years coral everywhere yep. you know sea not seas of fish schools of fish schools are through fish, there yep. and then after 10 years they're almost unrecognizable it's almost just you it can kind like of yeah. yeah and it doesn't look like you know a, a subway car with chairs and poles which is what you could see before right uh, even though it was all covered with coral that's awesome yeah really cool so i'm super excited to do that it's really are deep. you gonna get to go through it and everything um they they said that's like 16 staterooms were prepared oh. for purple for for, for purpose for, yeah. for divers to go in. Um, we'll see what the conditions oh. are like when we get there. Um, is it night or day? No, it's a day dive. Uh, early morning. Good. Because um, there's probably evil dark evil squids Evil dark and stuff. squids yeah. and sharks. Leviathans Le would eat yeah. you. <laughs> and krakens. I hope I don't run into Euron uh, while I'm there. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Thanks for thanks listening. Thanks for listening, Yo. not watching. <laughs> we'll uh, see you in a week. We'll see you in a week. Yeah.